Mr. Hook's conduct has gone well beyond the unethical and improper. It is shocking and even terrifying. F you, crooks. Eat a bowl of dicks. I'm going to let the long dick of the law f all state for all of us. He cannot continue to be an attorney in this case. The court should disqualify him. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So this next one, I promise you, will not be boring. This came across my feed from Popat and Keith Lee, and this was an interaction between Allstate, the insurance company, their lawyer, and another lawyer opposing counsel. I'm assuming since Allstate's an insurance company, there's some kind of insurance matter, but this really isn't going to be about the actual underlying claim. I'll let them speak for themselves. The speaker here is going to be Allstate. This is their memorandum and points of authorities in support of some kind of ex parte application. I have no idea what just by, by the generic words, ex parte application just means that they're up doing something without the opposing party, but I'm not sure what that means yet. This is before Judge Otis D. Wright II. This is the Prenda Law Star Trek opinion judge, if you remember that one. That was an amazing opinion, and that that set the stage for Prenda Law to be, to be shut down and for Paul Hansmeier and John Steele to go to jail or I believe they are right now as we speak. So let's take a look at what is going on in Alan Baker and Linda Oliver versus Allstate in their memorandum and points of authorities in support of some kind of ex parte application. And they write, Plaintiff's attorney Christopher Hook has embarked on a campaign of abusive and intolerable conduct that began with profanity-laced emails, escalated to discriminatory slurs, and culminated in repeated threats of physical violence against all states' witnesses, all states' attorneys, and their families. Therefore, all states seeks an ex parte order, one, dismissing this action, two, disqualifying Mr. Hook as plaintiff's counsel, three, restraining Mr. Hook from communicating with or approaching all state or its attorneys, four, preventing the depositions noticed by plaintiff from proceeding, and five, awarding sanctions. This case involves a simple insurance dispute over what it costs to repair water damage to plaintiff's house. Based on the estimate of a contractor whom Allstate retained, Allstate paid about $150,000. Based on an estimate that plaintiffs obtained from a different contractor, they contend damages are at least $350,000. Thus, the amount in dispute is about $200,000. Nevertheless, over the past week, and in the course of sending purported multi-million dollar demands to Allstate, Mr. Hook began sending dozens of abusive and threatening emails to Allstate's counsel. It started with vulgar tirades, a small sample of which includes... So here's the part where I'm going to stop for a second and ask you if you have small children or young children within earshot... I'm going to read some of these curse words and my editor is going to bleep them out, but there's still a bunch of curse words and there's still a bunch of bad words that aren't quite so bad that we have to bleep them out. But there's going to be a lot of them. And I know that that's sometimes really inappropriate around kids. It's also really entertaining to read. So either get your popcorn or get your kids out of the room. Let's go. It all started with vulgar tirades, a small sample of which includes F*** you crooks. Eat a bowl of dicks. I'm going to let the long dick of the law f all state for all of us. Hey, Clee, you c stain. The demand is now 302 million. Pay up, f Peter, when you are done f your copy boy, tell Allstate the demand is now 305 million. Other Shepard Moolin attorneys may not be so smart, but at least they have some f dignity and honor, unlike you two limp mother. I have now scared both of my dogs who have gone and hidden in the next room. Mr. Hook then began hurling discriminatory epithets at all state witnesses and all state's counsel. What is Wright going to do when he finds out all state is using people who are borderline to adjust complex claims? That's what I'm going to do. Demand increases tomorrow. Anytime now, I want my client's money. 
$306 million. Ironically, most of the abuse was directed toward Peter Klee, with whom Mr. Hook had never even met or spoken to, and Allstate regrets being forced to put this language into the record, but there is no other way to convey the gravity of Mr. Hook's misconduct. And I agree, I'm conveying it for its shock value, but what we're also going to talk about is why this is so wrong, why you would never do this, and why this is, this is not becoming of anyone who is an officer of the court or licensed to practice law. He continues, Hey for brains, Allstate owes my clients a lot of money. It's due yesterday. Pay up or you will be lucky to work as a notary public in El Cajon. Hey f Today only, the claim is on sale for $303 million. If you are too old, impotent, or stupid to even discuss settlement, maybe it is time to hand off the file to Paul Seely. I don't know who that is. Mr. Hook then escalated his reprehensible conduct and repeatedly threatened physical violence against Allstate's witnesses and attorneys. He continues, Tell Allstate I am going to waterboard each one of their trolls that show up for depo without any mercy whatsoever. Don't make me come down there and beat out of you, you f thief. I think he means beat it out of you. You are going to get f tattooed across the face, Clee. I'm going batshit crazy on your mother f It would be hard to imagine Mr. Hook's conduct getting any worse, but it did. He began to threaten the family of all states counsel. Well, karma is a b mother f You are going to learn that in spades, I know where you live, Pete. House in city where Allstate's counsel live. Tell name of counsel's wife it is going to be sold to pay my clients. None of Mr. Hook's conduct was triggered by anything that Allstate's counsel did or said. All of his communications with Mr. Hook were polite and professional. As a result of Mr. Hook's threats, Allstate's counsel had no choice but to take the disconcerting step of warning his family members that they may be in danger. Allstate's counsel also alerted security at his office not to permit Mr. Hook to enter their premises. Given the nature of Mr. Hook's threats, Allstate respectfully submits that this is a situation where, under the local rules, good cause exists for not including a statement of opposing counsel's position, Mr. Hook's conduct speaks for itself. Mr. Hook's actions go beyond the pale of anything that should be tolerated anywhere, let alone any legal proceeding. Depositions are scheduled for the week of December 9th, and Mr. Hook cannot be permitted to be in physical proximity with Allstate's witnesses or counsel. Therefore, Allstate has no choice but to seek this ex parte relief. The court should dismiss this action with prejudice, which means that the, that the claims are adjudicated and cannot be brought again. The court has inherent authority to dismiss this case based on Mr. Hook's alarming misconduct. A dismissal sanction does not require disobedience of a prior court order, nor must the court warn a party before imposing a dismissal sanction. Moreover, a party may not escape dismissal by arguing that he or she is the innocent party who will be made to suffer from the errors of his or her attorney. The established principle is that the faults and defaults of the attorney may be imputed to and their consequences visited upon his or her client. That does not mean that plaintiffs are left without a remedy. They may sue their attorney for malpractice. Short of an actual physical assault, which Mr. Hook has threatened and which Allstate now seeks to prevent before it happens, it is hard to conceive of more egregious conduct than Mr. Hook's. Indeed, courts have dismissed actions for far less. It is self-evident that there is no going forward with this case after this misconduct. Therefore, the court should dismiss this action, and it should be dismissed with prejudice because otherwise Mr. Hook could refile the case in another forum and continue his abuse and threats. The court should disqualify Mr. Hook as plaintiff's counsel. If for any reason the court declines to dismiss the case, the court should disqualify Mr. Hook for, from continuing to represent plaintiffs. Obviously, it is not tenable for him to continue participating in a case when he has threatened to waterboard all states' witnesses and to assault all states' counsel. District judges have an arsenal of sanctions they can impose for unethical behavior. These sanctions include monetary sanctions, contempt, and the disqualification of counsel. Whenever an allegation is made that an attorney has violated his moral and ethical responsibility, an important question of professional ethics is raised. It is the duty of the district court to examine the charge, since it is that court which is authorized to supervise the conduct of the members of its bar. The courts, as well as the bar, have a responsibility to maintain public confidence in the legal profession. This means that a court may disqualify an attorney for not only acting improperly, but also for failing to avoid the appearance of impropriety. 
Mr. Hook's conduct has gone well beyond the unethical and improper. It is shocking and even terrifying. He cannot continue to be an attorney in this case. The court should disqualify him. The court should also issue a restraining order prohibiting Mr. Hook from having any communication with Allstate and its counsel and from approaching their homes and places of business. Mr. Hook's threats to waterboard witnesses beat Allstate's counsel and tattoo them across the face are alarming enough, but Mr. Hook coupled those with warnings that I know where you live, which demonstrated he does, and even mentioned counsel's wife by name. Mr. Hook has shown himself to be in imminent danger. The court should issue a temporary restraining order prohibiting Mr. Hook from having any further communication orally in writing with Allstate or its counsel and approaching within 100 feet of the offices or homes of Allstate personnel and its counsel. The court should also set a hearing to have the restraining order become a more permanent injunction. The court should issue a protective order preventing depositions from proceeding. Again, in the event the court does not rule on other aspects, there's depositions coming up, and at a minimum, the court should issue a protective order prohibiting these depositions from proceeding. It goes without saying that all state's witnesses and attorneys cannot be present with Mr. Hook after he has repeatedly threatened them with assault, including to waterboard beat tattoo them across the face. And there should be an award of sanctions. Finally, no litigant, including Allstate, should be forced to bear the expense of seeking protection from an attorney's abuse and threats. The court has inherent authority to impose monetary sanctions. Allstate has incurred more than $6,370 in attorney's fees in bringing this ex parte application, not including the time reviewing and evaluating Mr. Hook's barrage of emails, and requests that the court order Mr. Hook to pay this amount to Allstate in sanctions. In a collective 75 years of legal practice, Allstate's counsel have never seen behavior that even comes close to that of Mr. Hook here. It is unlikely that the court has either. Allstate requests that the court grant the requested relief. Holy mackerel. Now hang on, that's not quite all because the court has responded. The court writes, does Judge Otis Wright, on November 26, 2019, defendant Allstate Insurance Company filed an application against plaintiffs you know, and their attorney. In that application, defendant requests an order dismissing the case, etc. Hitherto, plaintiffs have failed to oppose defendant's application. Okay. I, I, I guess the judge has a very high standard for how quickly that needs to be opposed because it appears to be a week. November 26th to December 2nd is a week. So that's quick. They, there was no opposition and he, he's going to use it against them. Hitherto, plaintiffs have failed to oppose defendant's application. Thus, the court finds the application is unopposed. Accordingly, the court grants defendant's request for a protective order, suspending all scheduled depositions until the resolution of this application. Furthermore, the court sets this matter for a hearing December 16th, 2019, 1.30 p.m., the parties, including the actual individual parties, Ms. Baker and Ms. Oliver, and an Allstate representative are ordered to appear and show cause why this matter should not be dismissed with prejudice, why Mr. Hook should not be disqualified as plaintiff's counsel, why this court should not issue a restraining order, and why this court should not sanction Mr. Hook. Failure to appear by either of the plaintiffs shall be construed as failure to comply with this court's order and may result in additional sanctions. Boom, Judge Otis Wright is ticked off and he is going to give us another wonderful opinion to read, I am sure. And that might be a Christmas present for us all. Who knows? We'll get to it as soon as it drops, I promise. We have our feelers out on this one. Hey guys, quick update. So just as we were about to drop this video, Mr. Hook filed his response and then Allstate filed their rebuttal, which we're going to go over in a video that'll drop next week. We'll produce it on Sunday on twitch.tv slash lawful masses at 10 a.m. Eastern time. If you wanna check it out, join us there. Let us know what you think in the comments below and go watch our reading of the Star Trek opinion if we have one. I'll link to it in the bubble. I think it's up I think it's up there there you go 
And that is our show. Thank you for watching. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is your favorite legal news and education channel, Lawful Masses, for you, our Lawful Masses. Thank you to those of you who support us financially, making this entire show slash project slash future, future legal services benefit corporation, maybe you were working on it, uh, for making that possible. At the $50 level, our patreon.com slash LJ French supporters and our sponsors.com slash law supporters are Aspernari, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Snorri Wizotsky, Black Leaf, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen, and I'd like to welcome two special $50 plus supporters, Rumble in the Bunghole and Cute Grills in your area. I'm sure we have no idea who those two people are. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel this time. I did not screw it up this time, I promise. And will be in the description of the videos that drop. I will put some dog video here where possible and where not, we'll figure something else out. I love you all. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I will see you on Sunday at 10 a.m. on twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses for the live Sunday show. Have a good one. Bye.